I'm in the middle school hanging out and these children are still just, they never ask questions. They're like, yeah, your mom's a witch. She's 118. What do you want? You're a New York Times bestselling author, influencer, podcaster, and one of our favorite Influencer? If you yeah, told our right. son I was an influencer, he would die. <laughs> Well, you put that in your bio. You're one of our favorite alums from One Tree Hill. Let me tell you something. It's so good to be with you. This new book is titled Grimoire Girl, yeah. Creating an Inheritance of Magic and Mischief. After years of collecting and cataloging the strange wonders of life, Hillary, why is now the time to unleash this book? Yeah, I think becoming a girl mom was a transformative thing for me because I'd had my son and there's a birthright that boys get, you know, that is kind of normalized in our culture. But for my daughter, it was, you know, we'd gone through the Me Too movement. We'd gone through lots of changes in our culture. We'd gone through national dialogues about like what it means to be a woman in the workplace. And I wanted her to have a really sound sense of self so that I could send her off into the world and she would know who she was. She would know what she came from. Only I didn't know what I came from. I didn't have like a strong female family to walk me through my inheritance or my heritage. And so I wanted it to stop with me. And I wanted mm. to collect traditions and ways of thinking and made up holidays and all the things that I wanted my daughter to have as her birthright. The book, it includes altar and uh, poetry spells, flower magic, even recipes for everyday life. And I read that you love candle magic. That's your favorite. And um, you now possess the healing powers that your grandmother did. So what magic routine do you participate in a on, on a daily? Candle magic is something that I love because I love a physical transformation. And this isn't something that's exclusive to witchcraft. What was important about this book is pointing out how normal all of these practices are. We all already have altars in our home. We all already practice candle magic on birthdays. You know, these are, we all have gardens where we like are somehow drawn to certain flowers. And so just waking yourself up to that is important because then it becomes intentional. And we're so much more powerful when we're intentional. So for me, I really do love candle magic. And my husband's like a candle freak. There's candles all over the house. Um, but what it allows me to do is while that candle is burning down, I can meditate on what I want, what I want to change, what I'm worried about. And it puts a timer on that feeling so that I'm not lost in a cycle of it. Mm. And I think that's a really important practice is putting a timer on a certain feeling so that you can feel it to its fullest and then let it go. And that's exactly what a candle is representative of. How did your One Tree Hill co-stars feel about these routines? And did you teach them anything? I teased Danielle Ackles so much because there was a Christmas where I made everybody homemade candles. I had gone to a local like antique store and gotten teacups, like old antique teacups, and made candles and put like flowers in all of them and like some crystals and glitter. And I gave them out to everyone, these magic candles. Oh and my God. Was thoroughly confused. Um, and they laughed so hard. They're like, what is this cup candle? And now that's a very commonplace thing to see. Um, and I don't think anyone would be surprised now, but I was in my early stages yeah. of figuring out who I wanted to be. And they were accepting, maybe they laughed at me a little bit, but they cherished those cup candles, damn it. Oh. And yeah. No, that's they, very special. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I bet they wish they all still had their cup candles. <laughs> <laughs> the process of creating this grimoire also involves you discarding parts of your life that no longer serve you, right? So what did you have to discard in order to create this legacy that you speak of, that you wanna leave behind for your daughter? Yeah, I mean, there are so many truths that we're told when we're little that we just accept, right? And I was told that I wanted to be an actor from the time I was two or three, and I had a great time acting. It was really, really fun. But when I had two and three-year-olds, I realized, no, I didn't say that. You know, like two and three year olds don't say that. And so this narrative I've been told all of a sudden was shaken. And that caused me to ask myself, what do I actually want to do? And the things that I was always drawn to were like team building things. Uh, I loved being behind the camera. I loved producing. I loved bringing random people together when we were making like Christmas movies and things. Uh, and this book was an opportunity to do that again and bring people together in more of a coven situation. I was calling all my teammates to join me 
in this situation of magical thinking. We learned so much about you, uh, how you were teased and called Medusa in high school oh. because of hair, but yeah. instead being shamed, you now had someone to look up to. And you were yeah. also transparent regarding your marriage to Jeffrey Dean Morgan and how you never felt like you had to prove anything to anybody. How has your hubby always made you feel accepted and how has he taught you to love yourself in ways that others may have not? When I met Jeffrey, I had left a very toxic situation and I was like, I'm never gonna act again. I'm done, I'm retired. And he was the first person that was like, great, I'm in love with you, I don't care what you do. And so much of my worth in my relationships had been based in, I was the actor, you know? That's what my role was. And so to have a person be like, I don't care about what you do for a living was so empowering. And so when I've decided to go back to hosting, he's been like, awesome. And when I decided to write books, he's like, <laughs> awesome. And when we bought the town candy store, he was like, awesome. And then we started a liquor line and he's like, what else do you want to do, Hillary? Like, I'll do all of it. Wow. Having a partner that knows that you will always be in transition and loves you for that is so important. Babe, I found a list from when I was 19 years old that described the life that I wanted. And I thought I was writing it about my boyfriend at the time, but he didn't fit any of those things that I wanted. And lo and behold, it walks into my world when I'm 27 years old and I'm still with him. Um, going back and looking at Whoa. that now is crazy. In the book, you also talk about paper mail and how there is a romance to a paper letter in the age of technology. I, I loved when you were talking about your husband's chicken scratch and you enjoy seeing him around the house. What's the most romantic thing that he's ever done for you? Oh, hold on. I've got it. Oh. Look, I carry this in my suitcase. Oh, oh, we love show and tell. We love show and tell. Oh, it's wow. reading time. It's circle time with reading and we're gonna show and tell. Like when I travel, he just yes. like writes on napkins and like draws pictures and stuff and like shoves it in my suitcase. And it's real, he knows how to get to me, babe. He Lord, knows. Lord, I see what you do for others, Lord. Yeah, he says, Mrs. Morgan. Oh man, this is a good one. He's flirty in this one. I can't read this one. <laughs> But I can see you're turning pink. This is good. Oh, who? Me? Never. The book is kind of unconventional, as you know. Do you ever fear that your kids may be targeted at school for that at all? My kids are very invested in inclusion. You know, I think that they are button pushers and that they are. My son's definitely politically engaged. That's very important to him. He works on a school newspaper and writes very hard hitting articles for seventh and eighth grade. Hmm. Um, so I don't think they would ever be ashamed of that. And what's lovely is that we live in a community where there isn't, I don't know, it's not footloose. You know, there's not a lot of discrimination in that way. But in the wider world, you know, I want them to be able to look at all the world's religions. I definitely write about Christianity a lot in this book because I grew up in an evangelical church. I, you know, then I went to the Methodist church and so often we're told that witchcraft and women who kind of walk this line are devoid of spirituality. And what I've learned is that they're actually the most spiritual people. They're the people mm -hmm. that see God and divinity in everything. And that's an important practice to give to my kids because then they can look at even tough situations and see the divinity in it and, and find, you know, the peace, the silver lining. Do their <laughs> peers kind of, um, you know, your mom's this, your dad's that. Yeah, like, yeah. In a cool well, way. No, so when Gus was in preschool, he was scared of a monster in his closet or something dumb. And I told him that I was a witch and that I was 108 years old. So this is like preschool, by the way. It's been 10 years. He told everyone in our town. He told all the other children. He told all their parents. He told the pediatrician. He told the postman. Like everyone knew mom was a witch. <laughs> and so here we are. I guess I'm 118 now. Um, and I'm in the middle school hanging out and these children are still just, they never ask questions. They're like, yeah, your mom's a witch. She's 118. What do you want? Okay. So I feel like it's appropriate for me to ask this. Do they, do they know who their parents are? This is just like a guilty pleasure question. They understand that dad is Negan because there's a lot of memorabilia that's been sent to the house. And so they know like what that is, but they don't understand what I do. And they are so irritated when people come up to us in the supermarket and act like I'm somebody because they're like, she's nobody, we're the somebodies. Like they're the stars of the show. Uh, so they're slowly 
getting an understanding of what mom used to do. My daughter's obsessed with Britney Spears, like obsessed. Mm. And I showed her a video of me uh, interviewing Britney, you know, like 20 mm. years ago. And that gave me street cred. Now I'm cool. <laughs> That was the one thing that you needed to show her. Okay, you, okay mom. Uh, yeah, now I've got a bookmarked on my phone now. I'm just like, anytime <laughs> she's being spicy, you want to see mommy with Britney?